everyone. It's Adam at Goat's Beast Place, home of the Gila Monster. Uh, today is a very exciting day here in Goat's Beast Place. We're going to be uh, bringing our adult Gila's out of brumation here and uh, set them up in their cages, back up in their cages, where they can get to normal temps and eventually start to breed. Um, yeah, we've got to do a lot of work here. we got to do quite a bit of... we got to weigh all of our Gila's, um, get ultrasound on our Gila's. As you can see behind me, uh, the cages are all cleaned and ready to go. Uh, fresh water is in there. Um, hygiene is very important for Gila monsters. And we plan on doing a lot of videos about Gila's coming up um, over the over the next couple of months uh, and through this whole breeding season. To talk about different things that you know as, as we progress through the breeding season. It, sh it should be a lot of fun. Um, and here is one of our lovely Gila monsters. This is Winnie. Winnie was not cool this year because she's still trying to feel a little better. She's new to our group. Uh, but yeah. She, she won't be breeding. Uh, Gila monsters really need to be in top condition in order to breed. So if they're not feeling well, maybe the weight isn't good, uh, you definitely don't want to cool them down and try and breed them because it gives them a lot of stress. Uh, working with Gila monsters is, is a great thing, and that's all we do here at Ghost Beach Place is work with Gila monsters. We don't work with any other species, any other reptiles. I mean, we have a couple of snakes, but we don't breed anything else other than Gila's. Um, so we'll go through the tour. Uh, today we're going to go through feed, uh, not feeding, uh, we're going to go through weighing the Gila's, uh, ultrasounding the Gila's, uh, seeing how things are reproductively inside of them. And then we'll, we're going to kind of keep track of this whole thing as we go through this breeding season. Uh, so after today, when we put them out for a brumation, uh, next up is we start feeding them and, and getting them nice and up to weight and healthy. And then after that, uh, in the beginning of April, we start to pair them. And, from, and then from there, after they're paired, if, if mating is successful, they should lay eggs in June. And then after that becomes a, a five-month uh, waiting period for the for the eggs to incubate. Um, they have, eggs have to be incubated for uh, a couple of months, and it's 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 a long process because it, the temperatures and your humidity have to be very stable. But we're going to go through everything and try and go through more just Gila monster care and about Gila monsters, and of course, lots of beautiful Gila monsters. There's beautiful Winnie saying hi. Happy to be here. All right, we're going to record some video of us going through the day of getting everything set up. And uh, we're going to talk about some more and, and hopefully get some more videos for you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to email us, uh, goatsbeat at gmail.com, or simply like it here in YouTube and, and, and ask a question below. If there's a question you have about Gila monsters or something you want to see, please go ahead and leave it in the comments below too, and we'll, we'll be sure to get to it. Thanks. We're going to go ahead and start the process of checking our Gila's in for 2022 breeding season. Um, and as you see, these were the boxes that the Gila's were in over the 2021 20, uh, winter and going into 2022 for the brumation cycle. Um, I did pair up my Gila's this year in some of the boxes and they were paired as they're going to be bred. So the Gila's, uh, some of these Gila's are bred before and they're familiar with each other. And we have a dude who have a new pair that we'll see here in just a moment um, as we open the box and kind of get them weighed and checked in. Um, you will see a glove here. Um, I don't always use gloves, but I do use them if I'm pulling a Gila out of a cage or if one's feeling a little spicy, I'll probably go ahead and put the glove on just to be safe. Um, the health and safety of the animal is always first. And then obviously the health and safety of myself and whoever's working with the Gila's is always important too. Um, and then as you see in the background there is my ultrasound machine, which we'll probably get to a little bit later on, as we want to check and see how the testes and the follicles are growing. Uh, when we first pull them out, because they do grow pretty fast once we pull them out of hibernation. And there's old Winnie in the back, checking everybody out, seeing what's going on. Let's go ahead and open up our first box here. Okay. And here we have our newest pair of Gila's. Gorgeous Gila's, banded Gila's. I'm looking forward to the patterns on these two. You see that one? That is Thunder, and he wants to come out already. So we'll go ahead and get him going here. So here we have Gila 23. His name is Thunder. You see he's a big, beautiful, strong boy. It's a really gorgeous example of a banded Gila monster with a unique pattern. Um, you see he's a really big one, too. He's a beast. Um, each of my cages does come with a card. And it has a scan on the back for reptile scan, so I can keep track of their weights and uh, you know putting them in brumation and breeding and everything else. And they're kind of clipped to the cage there. 
uh, for our easy identification. So we're going to go ahead and weigh Mr. Thunder here. And he is 914 grams. 914 grams. Always weighing grams. It's a little more accurate of a measurement. Um, and he's still pretty cold. Otherwise, he's going to be a little feisty. So 914 grams. We're going to go ahead and scan that and get him in. And then get him up to his cage. So here is our first gila we're doing. As you see, uh, what's interesting is they come out of brumation. They, uh, they tend to hold a lot of the weight. You know, lose a lot of weight. A lot of people think they come out uh, losing weight in brumation. But they actually, uh, a lot of them gain weight in brumation. This is gila 24. Another very beautiful pattern banded gila monster that we got late last year. She's uh, obviously a lot smaller than the past one we just did, the male we just did. Oh, probably helps you turn the scale on. Um, they're still they're still pretty cold, so they're they're pretty easy going at this point, but they can still give you a bite, so you gotta be real careful about that. All right, 581. A little, a little lighter than I like for a female going into breeding season, but we're gonna check her out and make sure she's nice and healthy before she goes into breeding. Now we're going to take out one of our other male healers. And again, these guys are cold. So grabbing them from above, they're pretty, still pretty chill. Here's another big boy. This is called Pumpkin. What's interesting is this is sold to me as a female. And the head does look a little bit female-ish. So that's why trying to gauge a uh, healer's sex by looks is usually uh, not an accurate thing. That's why we use the ultrasound for it. But we're going to go ahead and get his weight. Nice and chunky. 862. All right, big boy. Beautiful. Thank you. So here's Thunder in his cage. Nice and clean. Nice water bowl so he can catch up on his drink of water. Um, he's, he seems to be a nice, healthy weight. He's looking pretty good. We're going to see how he is. He's a little huffy puffy right now. And they usually are when they first come out of brumation. Nice, cold, a little chilly. I like to wait a week or so to, before I start feeding them, make sure their kind of gut floor is doing good. Um, that's just my, my my guess. I can't say if that's really true or not. I just uh, like to give them a little time to kind of get acclimated back into the regular temperatures because they go from in the mid to low 50s uh, up to the 70s. You know, I, I, I do it over the course of a week, but still, their body still takes a little time to get used to it. So here he is drinking some water. Probably going to soak and have a good little time. All right, we're going to do one more Gila monster here. This is one of our big banded Gila monster females. And as you see, she's nice and chunky. Looks like she didn't lose any weight for sure. Look at that big fat tail uh, going into the going, coming out of the brumation here. And this is Belle, our third Gila monster. I'm going to put her in here and see where she's at. 946. That's great for a. It's great for a big chunky female. See, she's starting to shed a little bit here too. Still a little chilly, waking up from going into brumation. And into her cage she goes. Nice clean cage, clean water. A little heat for right now. There's Big Mama Bell in her cage. She's uh, been producing with us. She's been a part of our family for a couple of years now. And you can definitely see the difference in a, a female that's been sitting and waiting, gaining the weight as she should. She's starting to warm up a little bit. Going to probably jump in the water here as she goes in. Uh, we do label all our cages, live venomous reptiles, as is required by Florida state law. And then there's also other information for reptile scan here, including the avid chip number, as well as the Gila name, the birth date, and other pertinent information. Hey, Belle, good to see you again. Good morning. All right, we got two more Gila's they're going to pull out here. Get them weighed. Kind of get them settled in for today. So that way they're, they're ready for the ultrasound tomorrow, maybe a little poking and prodding, and then sometime next week. Here is a 
Don't want to surprise us. Healers aren't quick, but I don't want to turn around and put my hand in one's face either. So uh, this is Winston. Winston is my first healer. I got him in 1998. Uh, he's he's a boy, and he's been a good friend of mine through many uh, different things throughout life. Uh, a lot of different stages of life he's been, been with me for. So he's, he's definitely more than just a, a healer monster. He's a part of the family for sure. I'm going to go ahead and get him weighed. 8.33. Hey, buddy. Good morning. Good morning. And this is Winston. Say hi, Winston. See, he's a beautiful reticulated Gila monster. And he is uh, quite docile, but he's still uh, very capable of, of, of dealing with painful bites. So always give him the respect he deserves. All right. There you go, buddy. I don't want to give him the full amount of heat when I first put him in because I want to make sure they're a little acclimated before you know going from the 50s to you know uh, 98 degree heat spot is uh, not where we want to be and last but not least here is our girl heather heather is another female reticulated gila monster she, she's gorgeous she's got that beautiful nice beautiful pink and she's been a, with us for two for a couple years a nice breed to look at that big chunky tail yeah i think that when they're when they're really in good in good health uh not obese health but when they're in good health they definitely uh can gain some weight over the winter time which is interesting let's go and get her weighed all right 843 a nice healthy 843 there we go sweetie it's good to see you too now you see i'm picking them up with my bare hands right now um a lot of times i will if i feel comfortable and i and i, and I read their read how they're acting if they're really if i'm going to the cage from the front of them i don't want to put my hand in front of them so i will use a glove at that point but a lot of times especially when i'm handling it like this or i'm ultrasounding them i will uh, definitely use my hands versus using the glove because i feel more comfortable doing that let's go ahead and get big mama over here in her cage there we go all right so this will wrap up about day one of uh pulling the helis out of brumation getting them weighed. Uh, we didn't ultrasound them today, but we will probably tomorrow. Um, and we'll record that too for you guys so you guys can see what that's about. We are going to track um, about every week, but maybe every every other week, uh, how the uh, follicles and testes mature as we get closer to the breeding season, which uh, kicks off now, but officially we start pairing in, in, in April. And that depends on the size of the follicles um, and the growth of the of the helas, and obviously if they're, if they're of healthy weight. Uh, the, the health of the animal is always paramount, and we want to make sure they're healthy before you put them into a stressful breeding situation. So, uh, till next time, here's a couple shots of the healers.